Today's topic is uh, laminar frame propagation. Uh, so, we will see the aspects of um, how a laminar frame uh, feed is uh, calculated and some theory about that. Then uh, we will touch upon flammability limits, then um, ignition and quenching of uh, flames and uh, finally, flame stabilization. Okay, so, we have already seen uh, when we covered the topic of uh, deflagration and detonation that if we have a long duct which is filled with uh, uh, premixed reactants, homogeneously uh, uniform uh, reactants uh, at any unburnt temperature, okay, uh, like unburnt reactant temperature. And if it is uh, ignited at uh, the open end, then we saw that a steady uh, flame propagates through the mixture, reactant mixture. And uh, uh, the, the based upon the uh, equivalence ratio, unburnt uh, temperature, the fuel type, etcetera, the flame speed will be set and it will vary. Okay. So, this deflagration uh, was uh, called laminar flame propagation. Okay. So, uh, when it was ignited, when the same uh, setup, uh, one side was closed and it was ignited at the closed end and we saw that the flame actually accelerates and uh, subsonic to supersonic speeds can be achieved in that uh, uh, case and that was called detonation. Okay. So, we can have, uh, but in uh, normal applications like uh, domestic and industrial applications, we seek uh, uh, premix flames uh, where we have subsonic velocities basically. So only in special applications, we go for detonation type of uh, things like detonation pulse, pulse, detonation engines and so on. We have already seen that. Okay. So, so flame uh, propagates through uh, premix reactant mixture basically and uh, we, we want to see how the flame propagation varies and how, how uh, we have to analyze that and so on in this particular course. Okay. Now, this is actually some test apparatus where we allow the flame to propagate through a particular uh, reactant mixture and so on. But in actual uh, uh, scenario and applications, we need to uh, supply reactants at some rate and uh, we normally seek flame to be stationary. See for example, uh, the flame can be kept stationary on a burner port. Okay. See for example, uh, given two examples here, one is called Bunsen burner where unburn, unburnt um, reactants enter and uh, it passes through a uh, chamber uh, or a duct okay, or a port whatever you can say and uh, at the end of this, we have a flame which is formed. Okay. So, for example, the luminous premixed flame. So, that is formed over the uh, conical a uh, conical shaped flame forms over the Bunsen burner. It is only a, a cylindrical duct basically uh, through which we pass on the uh, unburnt uh, reactants. Uh, so, so, if you see this, the flame is stationary and it uh, actually uh, stands over the end of the duct. Okay. Uh, by uh, supplying the unburnt uh, reactant at a particular rate or a given range of flow rates, we can achieve uh, such uh, flames which are stationary over the uh, end of the duct. Okay, we call this the exit of the burner. Okay. Similarly, we can also have a flat flame here. In this case, we can also have a flat flame which can be established over a uh, burner. So this is called flat flame burner where the reactor mixture is uh, uh, sent through and there is a honeycomb structure. So this is honeycomb structure. Honeycomb structure. So which will uh, um, actually uh, guide the reactant to come out in a uniform manner and when ignited, we get a flat flame, almost flat flame which is uh, uh, just over the uh, exit of the burner. Okay. So, this type of uh, uh, burners uh, we use for certain, several applications basically. So, the flat flame burner or the burns and burners. Okay. So, the flame is kept stationary by supplying the reactant mixture at a certain rate. Okay, as I told you, there is a certain range of flow rates which can give us a stationary flame. If you increase or decrease that, the flame will no more be stationary. So, those aspects we will see later. So, at a certain range of rates or a certain rate, if the unburned reactant mixture is supplied, uh, then the flame can be kept stationary. So, this is going to be uh, several applications for us. For example, this may be a gas stove where we, uh, we have multiple ports through which the uh, gas, the reactant mixture comes out and burns. So, that uh, stationary flame survives there. The moving flame 
cannot uh, be used for any application basically. Okay, so the the rate at which the reactant mixture is sent through the burner uh, is to be should be such that uh, the magnitude of the velocity component normal to the flame surface is almost equal to the laminar flame speed. Okay, that means the velocity, the local velocity of the uh, reactant mixture and the laminar flame speed locally there at a particular point should match. If such a balance happens, such an equilibrium happens, then the flame can be kept stationary over the burner rim. Okay? So, the flame is kept stationary by supplying the reactant mixture at a certain rate such that the magnitude of the velocity component normal to the flame structure. See, please understand that the uh, definition of laminar flame velocity will be the normal component. You can see this, we have already discussed this. The normal velocity component of the uh, 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 from the flame or the flame actually propagates the normal component of the velocity is called laminar burning speed or laminar uh, burning velocity and uh, when you supply the reactants, its uh, velocity component normal to the flame uh, surface should be almost same as the laminar flame speed. Okay? So, if you have a given fuel and uh, equivalence ratio and unburnt flame temperature, we have a, um, a range of small range of uh, laminar flame speed. So, if you if your velocity, the reactant velocity is uh, more or less uh, same as that, then we can keep the flame stationary. Okay? So, as I told you, the Bernsen burner with the conical flame here, this is called conical flame. and uh, a flat premix flame here, the flat flame. These are the examples where the flame is kept stationary over the burner port. Okay? So, these type of uh, burners are suitable for several applications. A moving flame will not be used in any application basically. Okay, now, let us uh, see some characteristics of Bunsen burner flame. Okay, so, in Bunsen burner, uh, what we supply is uh, and, uh, the reactant mixture is supplied in a, in a long tube, okay, basically vertically oriented tube and um, at the exit of the burner, we can see a conical flame. So, this, uh, this conical flame is formed at the end of the uh, burner port. So, it is based upon the equivalence ratio, okay, etc. The conical flame, the length of that, etc. or the angle, if you, if you see this, it has an angle here. So, this angle is alpha of cone angle. So, the angle etcetera varies based upon your velocity. So, this comes with the average velocity of u. The reactant mixture comes into the duct with an average velocity. Please understand that the velocity profile if you draw, it will be almost a parabolic shape for a fully developed flow inside a circular duct. Okay? So, you can see the velocity profile will be like this. But I am talking about the average velocity. This will be the, the u is the average velocity. Okay, so, the average velocity basically is u. It is unburnt uh, reactant velocity. And uh, this actually if you see this is a typical streamline. This is a typical streamline. The, the unburnt gas flows and uh, changes its direction uh, almost perpendicular to the flame surface and uh, go, goes away again. So, now the component of the velocity normal to the flame surface, this is the flame surface, normal to the flame surface, what is the component of this u? That is what we are interested in. That will be the laminar flame speed. Okay? So, a conical premix luminous flame is formed at the exit of the Bunsen burner. If u is the average velocity of the reactant mixture in the burner tube, and alpha is the off cone angle as indicated here, then the velocity component normal to the flame surface is u into sin alpha. Correct? So, this all this, you know the off angle and you know the velocity and uh, the perpendicular component to the flame surface is u into sin alpha. This will be equal to the laminar flame speed. That means, 
S L will be equal to u times sin into half cone angle, sin of half cone angle, ok, sin alpha, ok. So, so in this case what happens is we have a reactant mixture which is actually flammable in nature, ok. So, if you see this, this reactant mixture does not need additional fuel or additional oxidizer, ok. Without uh, requiring additional fuel or additional ox oxidizer, this reactant mixture will burn. So, it burns and forms a conical flame over the uh, exit of the burner and uh, how to calculate the laminar flame speed in this case? See, in the previous case, in the previous case, you, you can see a long duct is there and uh, when, when uh, the open end is ignited, a flame which is slightly curved propagates over this tube and uh, you know the starting position and ending position, you can mark some two positions of distance uh, L for example and the time it takes, the flame takes to propagate through this distance L you can uh, get the SL value. So, SL value in this case will be, so let us say this is the distance L covered by the flame inside time t. So, SL can be calculated as L by t. So, it is almost steady propagation. You can also divide it into several lengths and see whether the flame propagation is steady. That means, if you take any distance, it takes a particular time. If you take another distance at a, another position, same distance, then it will take almost the same time to cover. So, that is called steady propagation. So, if you know that the time taken for the flame to cross over a particular distance L, then you get the laminar flame velocity. So, in a moving flame, we can get the laminar flame speed by just uh, measuring the time which is taken for the flame to travel through a given distance L. Okay. Now, on the other hand, if you have a stationary flame, flame like this, it is a conical flame. So, the laminar flame speed in this case is the normal component of the velocity. So, you know you are supplying the mixture now at a particular flow rate. So, you know the mass flow rate of the reactant mixture m dot r. Now, from this you can calculate the volumetric flow rate of the reactant mixture. Okay? So, that is nothing but rho into volumetric flow rate m dot r equal to rho into volumetric flow rate. So, you know the volumetric flow rate now. So, volumetric flow rate of the reactant divided by the area of cross section that will give you the velocity. So, that will be give you the average velocity u. Okay? So, the volumetric flow rate of the reactants that is meter cube per second divided by the area of cross section which is in uh, meter square. So, that will give you the velocity in meter per second the average velocity superficial velocity. But please understand that the velocity actually varies in a, a non-uniform manner across the radius. Okay, so now this u is the average velocity. Having measured the flow rate, mass flow rate, you can calculate the average velocity u, and uh, you you can uh, see the flame which is formed. And by taking a flow photograph of the flame, you can measure optically the cone angle alpha the half cone angle alpha. Okay? So, once you know the half cone angle alpha and the velocity u, the laminar flame speed SL can be determined by u into sin alpha. Okay? So, here you see that the flame is stationary and you are measuring the velocity of the unburned reaction, reactant mixture and uh, measuring the cone angle. By doing so, you can cal calculate the SL value. It can also be done, the flame speed laminar flame speed can, all, can also be determined by dividing the volumetric flow rate V r of the reactant by the surface area of the flame. So, S L can be directly found by dividing the volumetric flow rate divided by the surface area of the flame. Now, you know the cone, the cone surface you can measure. So, a conical flame is formed, the surface of the cone can be measured, correct. So, then you can, uh, so this is the surface area, A s is the surface area of the cone. So, once you know that, then the volumetric flow rate of the unrea uh, unburnt reactant divided by the surface area of the flame, that will give you the SL value, that is another method. So, please understand that uh, both of this can be used, almost same result will be got, either you measure the alpha and the calculated velocity, unburned gas velocity, average velocity u and uh, substitute that 
uh, like this. So, u into sin alpha you get S L or you can get the volumetric flow rate divided by the area of the uh, flame, area of surface, surface area of the flame. If you do that, that will also will give the S L value. Okay. Now, please understand here in this flame we have put the luminous premix flame which is conical in shape and uh, that is a outer diffusion flame or plume. So, what happens is if you, you this, is, this will form based upon the equivalence ratio of the mixture. See for example, if the equivalence ratio of the mixture is say um, lean okay, less than 1 or less than equal to 1 stoichiometric or uh, lean uh, in fuel okay, that is the uh, excess oxygen. So, what happens is complete combustion takes place. So, all the combustion is over in this cone itself. Okay, then only hot gas surrounds this. Hot gas is uh, it will go up, rise up uh, above the flame. On the other hand, if the fuel mixture is rich, that means the equivalent ratio is more than 1, then what happens? Only you are supplying oxidizer only to burn a given amount of fuel. Then the excess fuel which is there will not have oxygen, it will go out of the flame and that will burn as a diffusion flame. The diffusion flame means for the excess fuel which is coming out of this flame, conical flame, you will have air which is coming from the ambient. So, air will enter into the ambient and a flame will be formed. So, that is called outer diffusion flame. So, there only at the uh, point where this excess fuel which has come out of the premix flame and the air from the ambient mixes. Okay? So, it is a mixing control. Okay? The ambient air comes into the flame surface come to, uh, to the towards the flame surface and the excess um, fuel which is leaving the conical flame will also reach that surface. So, where they mix at stoichiometric proportion that this outer diffusion flame will be formed. Okay? So, in the case of lean or stoichiometric you do not have fuel, fuel almost burns like in the stoichiometric case fuel almost burns and the lean case fuel will burn and only the hot products with excess oxygen comes out. So, that, that is no problem in that, but if you go for rich mixture, then the excess fuel which is not able to burn within the cone because it does not have enough oxygen to burn, it comes out and uh, the ambient air entrains into the uh, into this and they mix and form a diffusion flame. So, it is got two flame structure will be formed. Okay? So, when, when the uh, reactor mixture is uh, rich, then another non-luminous, non-premixed uh, non or diffusion flame surrounds this conical pre-mix flame. Okay? So, this is the uh, important uh, things you should understand. Okay? So, in the Bunsen burner we typically form a conical flame and uh, by uh, measuring the average velocity and the half angle of the cone we can get the laminar flame speed. Okay? It is also measured by measuring the surface area of the flame and uh, dividing it to the volumetric flow rate of the reactants. Okay. Now, if the fuel uh, the phi is uh, rich okay, greater than 1, okay, then what happens is the excess fuel which is coming out of the conical premix flame without uh, having enough oxygen to burn, that will burn with the uh, oxygen from the atmosphere. Okay. Now, for methane air flames, okay, several equivalence ratio are uh, used here and the flame uh, shape photographs is shown in this particular uh, figure. So, the equivalence ratio is varied from 0 0.7 to 1.4. Okay, all the values are given. So, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, this is 1 and this is say 1.1 .1, and I uh, will write everything. So, 1.3. So, this is 0 0.8, 0 0.9. So, if you vary the equivalence ratio, uh, you can see that the flame shape height the luminosity, luminosity is a bright portion of the flame, everything varies. Right? So, if you take this, so till this is this is stoichiometry, so when you say 0 0.1, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, etc., you have excess oxygen, and uh, now you can see that the diffusion flame in the outer outside the uh, conical flame, premix flame, the diffusion flame is not present. Once you go out of this, say 1.1, .1, etc., you can see that that is a outside this you have a outside this you have another 
flame. Okay, you can see this clearly when you go for richer and richer mixtures. Okay, so this the conical part is luminous, that is brighter, and the outside is not so luminous. They are it's called non-luminous. Okay, so it is basically uh, when you use uh, methane type fuel, you get this. Okay, so now Bunsen burner flame photograph is a direct flame photograph of methane and air. So methane is the fuel and air is the oxidizer. So several equivalence ratios varying from 0.7 to 1.4 has been illustrated in this photographs. Okay, so now you can see that the cone angle varies. You know when you want to supply a mixture at a, a particular uh, flow rate, you have a particular velocity u. So based upon the velocity u, okay, you will have and the equivalence ratio phi. This is equivalence ratio phi, and the velocity u also varies basically. Uh, so you are using the same burner. Uh, so we have to see at what velocity a stable flame will be got for a given equivalence ratio. Please understand that you cannot have a single velocity u and only vary the phi and get this. Okay, see please understand that u also so varying u. Varying u. This is not a constant u. Please understand that the velocity of the reactor mixture is not constant. We cannot get the uh, stable flames when we do so. So what we do is based upon the equivalent, uh, equivalence ratio we need to vary u in a small range so that you will get a stable flame. What is stable flame? The flame is seen to anchor in the burner exit like this. You can see the flame will be it will be slightly away like one or two mm or three mm away from the burner rim but it will be very close. If you see the overall thing, it will not, you will not even uh, see any gap between the burner rim and the flame anchoring point. So this, this uh, edge of this, the base of the flame will be almost very close to the uh, this. So based upon the equivalence ratio, you have to vary the U, the average reactant velocity such that the uh, stable flames are formed and uh, such uh, flame. So that means in these cases, please understand that the U is not constant. Uh, you can have, if you want to have a U constant, then you have to vary the burner diameter. Since the same burner is used, the U has to be varied to get the uh, stable flames. Now you can see that the angle, the cone angle, etc., are very crisp. When you go till say 1.1, you can uh, get almost a crisp cone angle, cone shape and uh, we can measure the cone angle easily. But when you go to richer side, you can see that the cone is not as um, like a crisp as the previous case, the length increases and it, it, the curvature forms at the top and so on. So actually speaking, the velocity, the cone angle here, you have to average, uh, you have to average it and take and uh, so it will be uh, not very accurate when you measure the cone angle in this case. But the surface area of this uh, bright flame can be measured by integrating the, uh, the contour line of the bright surface we can get the surface area and volumetric flow rate you know. So volumetric flow rate divided by the surface area gives the SL value. So we can get the SL values by this. So obviously you can see that based upon the equivalence ratio you will get so the, there are two things which is changing flame shape itself changes. So for example, the flame height is higher, it decreases and decreases again, then at one it increases, then you can see increasing trend in the flame height. Then you can see the luminosity of the flame. Here point 0.1 it is not so luminous, but if you take point 0.9 or point 0.8, point 0.91, you can see the luminosity increases. Even till 1.1, you can see that the luminosity increases as the equivalence ratio is increased. The luminosity is the bright inner cone part correct that increases as the equivalence ratio is increased from the lean side 0.7 onwards to say 1.1 slightly richer 1.1 is slightly richer after that you can see there is a uh, notable decrease in the inner cone okay the inner flame luminosity decreases so you can see 1.2 etc you can see there is a sharp decrease in the luminosity okay so temperature of the reactant mixture is now kept same in this all these cases okay u is varied and uh, the phi is varied to get these photographs now what happens okay similarly operating pressure also is kept at uh, around 1 bar operating pressure okay now equivalence ratio is increased 
the luminosity of the conical inner flame increases when you increase the this two points on to the 1.1 okay 1.1 also we can say 1.05 is the maximum uh, luminosity we are getting then what happened when the phi is greater than 1.1 the luminosity decreases so luminosity actually is associated with the flame temperature we will see that so when you increase the phi gradually from a lean value to a richer value you will see notable changes in the flame shape uh, the crispness of the cone angle then the luminosity of the inner cone and in the rich cases you will see the uh, the diffusion uh, flame which is formed which is not seen in the lean cases and uh, it slightly it forms in the stoichiometric region uh, due to some uh, leak of uh, some uh, radicals etc away from the flame but after that you can see in the rich side you can see the fuel coming out unburnt burns with the help of the atmospheric air and the air diffusion flame forms over this so that may be one of the reason why the luminosity decreases okay so this is the important uh, characteristics of the uh, bunsen burner flames okay now let us see how the adiabatic flame temperature varies with equivalence ratio because that is very important the flame the, as i told you the luminosity uh, varies as the flame temperature similarly the flame speed also varies or is affected very much by the adiabatic flame temperature so the adiabatic flame temperature is the maximum temperature which is attained okay so that does the characteristic uh, temperature which we want so the flame temperature actually depends on heat of reaction okay but the heat of reaction attains a maximum value for a mixture when it is stoichiometric one phi equal to 1 the heat of reaction attains a maximum value okay so when you increase this so heat of reaction uh, basically what happens is uh, uh, will be the maximum then if you go to the linear side the dissociation etc will take place so you go you, it will decrease again so heat of reaction variation is different see i am not talking about the standard heat of reaction okay in heat of reaction given some uh, temperature uh, for the products now flame temperature basically what happens is attains the maximum value when the mixture has an equivalence ratio which is slightly greater than unity it doesn't happen at the phi equal to 1 so you may wonder that the, the uh, flame temperature actually follows heat of reaction but it attains flame temperature attains a maximum value so if you can see this a typical case for uh, uh, methane and air flames uh, again 0.7 to 1.4 the equal ratio is varied and the uh, adiabatic flame temperature is calculated and it has been put here you know this is the stoichiometric line and uh, you can see the maximum is attained at around 1.05 so this is equivalent ratio of 1.05 so phi equal to 1.05 so slightly richer point you can get the uh, adiabatic flame temperature becoming maximum you can see that okay so there is a clear shift in the equivalence ratio corresponding to the maximum heat of combustion and maximum flame temperature correct why this is because of the properties if for example the thermal conductivity specific heat and uh, mass diffusivity etc are functions of temperature so due to the uh, the these variables this properties changing with temperature uh, the maximum flame temperature itself changes slightly shifts its maximum occurs slightly to the right of the phi equal to 1 line so it occurs at the richer uh, portion so this variation we should understand so what happens when the mixture is lean say 0.7 okay what happens you have excess nitrogen okay lesser fuel to burn with the excess oxygen and excess nitrogen so obviously the dilution effects come into play so the flame temperature is less as you increase fuel in the mixture due to more heat release the this increases actually the maximum heat release occurs at this point equal to the 1 so we would we would expect that the adiabatic flame temperature also will reach the maximum here but due to the dependency of the properties like thermal conductivity specific heat and mass diffusivity etc 
transfer properties. Okay, the thermal conductivity specific heat, density, etc., will contribute to alpha. This is the thermal diffusivity. So, thermal diffusivity, uh, then uh, mass diffusivity, etc., though those vary with temperature in, uh, and also affect the calculation of the adiabatic flame temperature. Okay, so even if you measure it, okay, so that uh, the transfer processes are affected by the variation of the properties with the temperature. As a result of that, you get the maximum flame temperature at slightly richer part, not at the phi equal to 1 line. So, this shift you should understand. So, this is the characteristic variation. So, now it reaches maximum at a slightly richer part. Then what happens? Dissociation etc. continues. You do not, you have more fuel than uh, uh, what is, what can be burnt with the oxygen which is supplied. So, what happens in this case is the fuel only burns partially. So, due to which the heat release decreases and also the flame temperature. The, this, in this uh, wing, you can see that the both the uh, the flame temperature decreases as well as the heat release. So, that is uh, fine. So, th this decreases due to the uh, partial uh, combustion of the fuel only. Okay. So, it needs more air to burn. Okay. At this point, you can see this uh, decreasing trend is uh, seen. So, the adiabatic flame temperature variation should be understood because the flame speed variation follows pretty much this variation. Okay. That is what we are going to see next.